let's talk about five ways to make your videos look better. So, my dudes and dudettes, I haven't said it in a while, but you know, I'm constantly thinking it. So, here we go, I'm gonna say it again. Thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting my channel. It means a lot to me and you're all awesome. Yeah, there, that's all I wanna say. You're all awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Let's talk about how to improve your videos because that's what you're all here for, right? And I'm gonna start with a big one, something that I struggled with for months, even though in the back of my head, I kinda knew what the problem was. Colors, contrast, and saturation. For a long time, I just couldn't get it right. Every time I uploaded a video, the colors either looked oversaturated or completely washed out. Sometimes there was too much contrast or not enough. And then on top of all that, my videos looked completely different on every device. I just couldn't get it right. And then like six months ago, I think, I finally did what I should have done from the beginning. Look, I know that YouTube uses the sRGB color space and that's pretty close to Rec. 709, the standard for video. Now, in the beginning of my channel, I was using the standard profile on my laptop screen when I was editing. Well, that doesn't work. You'll never get the colors right. Then what I tried was setting the color profile of my laptop screen to sRGB, so what YouTube uses. That was a little bit better, but there was still a big difference between what my videos looked like on YouTube and what my videos looked like when I was editing them in DaVinci Resolve. So I always had to over or undercompensate saturation and contrast, you know what I mean? To get it right for YouTube. So yeah, apparently those color profiles of the MacBook Pro are garbage. If you want to get it right, you have to calibrate your screen. And that's what changed everything for me. I'm using a calibrated screen now, and I know that when I'm editing in DaVinci Resolve, what I see there is also what it's gonna look like after I upload it to YouTube. Not 100% the same, of course, because of the compression, but very, very close. So if you're struggling with getting the colors and the contrast right on different media, color calibration is the answer. Now, just so you know, there are still differences. If I check one of my videos in Google Chrome on my laptop and compare to my iPhone, it doesn't look the same, but that's unavoidable. The important thing is that I don't get those weird results anymore and those big differences. And it makes everything so much easier and less frustrating. The next tip is don't be lazy. Now, you probably already knew that, but I recently found out that sometimes, even when I think that I'm not being lazy, I'm still being lazy when I'm shooting a B-roll or a video. So let me just show you something. Do you remember my solo B-roll that I shot a few weeks ago? In case you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link in the description. But here's a short clip of me riding the bike. First, the lazy version. That's what it would have looked like a few years ago when I started making videos. Now let's take a look at what it would look like on those days that I put in some effort, but still not enough. Much more dynamic, right? But it still doesn't sparkle, it doesn't have that wow factor. So. Now let's take a look at what it looks like when I put in maximum effort and let's also add some music. Wow, what a difference. You know, instead of being lazy and moving on to the next part of the sequence so I could be done sooner, I decided to put my camera on my tripod, held it upside down while I was riding the bike to get those cool moving shots. I put maximum effort in it. And I even took a risk because it was kind of dangerous for my camera. So don't be lazy. And of course, it applies to different aspects of filmmaking. Getting creative shots and interesting angles, of course, but also preparing your shoot and looking for a location, editing your sequence. For example, don't just settle for the first music track that you find and you think like, 
Okay, that sounds good enough. No, good enough is not good enough. Yeah, that's right. Good enough is not good enough. Put some effort in it. Sometimes I browse for hours to find that perfect music track because I know that it makes all the difference. Don't be lazy. And I know it's hard. Next, we have camera movement, and more specifically, how and when to use camera movement. Wait, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so, you know, a lot of times people say, you have to add camera movement because it makes your videos better, but that's not true, and I'm gonna give you a simple example. Something what I call the, the tourist pan, and that's moving the camera like this. You know, like pivoting. A lot of beginners, including me when I started making videos, what they do is, when they want to capture a nice scene or landscape, what they do is... Okay, there's something nice. Let's get that. Oh, there also. Nice. And then maybe... Oh, up there. Okay. I think I have everything. See what I mean? It's like moving the camera like this, just to every little thing that you see. But that, that's not right, because what you get then is something that looks like this. And that doesn't look right. What you should do is get different shots, cut out all that in-between stuff. Because it's not that just because you're moving the camera like that, that that's camera movement. You know what I mean? It won't make your video look dynamic. What you should do is get a shot of the first interesting thing that you want to show, then cut and get a second shot, add something in the foreground maybe, some movement, then cut and so on. Don't move from one interesting thing to another and just make it one long shot and then just because you're moving the camera you think like yeah it will look nice because that's not how it works. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Next we have sound. Look, in the beginning, some of my videos looked bad because they sounded bad. Yeah, that, that happens. Because sound is just as important as the visuals, what you see. For talking head videos, of course it's important, but also for b-roll and commercials. And I'm not talking about just music, but also sound effects. Let me show you a short clip again of that solo b-roll. First, without sound effects. Okay, and now with sound effects. I don't even have to explain this, right? It's just mind blowing the difference. Okay, and then finally, pay attention to details even if the viewer doesn't see them. What? How, how does that make sense? Look, details that you can see obviously are super important because people will notice them. Not everyone will notice them, but you know, the result wouldn't be the same without it. For example, adding a simple rim light to a shot. So adding details is super important, but also removing details dust or an object that shouldn't be in the frame and you know no one will know that you removed that object from the shot but if it would be there the shot wouldn't be as good so adding details that's important but also removing them even though you're the only one that knows that you did that removing that object or dust or whatever but it does make all the difference details details make all the difference Okay, uh, that's it for today guys, 5 things that will help you to improve your videos. Try it out, right now, get out there, shoot a video and let me know. Thank you so much for watching guys and see you in the next one.